G'day, it's Tony from GMA. In this video, we're gonna cover the GMRS antenna range from GMA. Now, if you're not familiar with GMRS antennas, it can seem a little bit confusing and a bit overwhelming when people start talking about gain and DBI, and it can be quite technical. So in this video, we're gonna simplify the whole story for you to help you decide which antenna is right for your overlanding vehicle. But rather than sitting here in the studio and talking about antennas, we figure we'll head downstairs to our factory and you can see where the antennas get built. Now, one of the really unique things about GME's range of GMRS radome antennas is that they're all designed, engineered and manufactured right here in Sydney, Australia. We've been manufacturing radios and antennas for the four wheel drive and overlanding community for many years. And we know exactly what we need to do to make sure that you get the most robust product to suit your overlanding adventures. Now in the GMRS antenna range from GME, we've got a couple of different models and they look a little different. Some are shorter, some are longer, some have got large springs and some have got slightly smaller springs. And there's a reason for all of that, which we'll explain to you now. Now, one of the terminologies when it comes to GMRS antennas that you might come across is ground dependent and ground independent. Now, the good news for you is all of the antennas in the GME GMRS range are ground independent which gives you a lot more versatility in terms of where you mount the antenna on your vehicle. Now, ground dependent antennas, as the name implies, depend on a ground plane in order to function correctly. So if you think back to old school CB antennas, the best position for one of those being ground dependent was in the middle of your roof. So you had to drill a hole in the middle of your roof to mount the antenna and use the roof as the ground plane. With our new ground independent antennas, you don't require a ground plane because it's built into the radome of the antenna. So you can mount them on your bumper, you can mount them up on a bonnet hinge mount bracket or on the roof of your car, which will give you the best possible performance. The reason for that is GMRS antennas work on line of sight. So the taller your antenna, the further it's going to be able to transmit. So having all of the transmission power in the world in your 50 watt radio and then transmitting through a small antenna isn't gonna give you great performance. So with the GME GMRS range, we've got five watt radios, but high quality radome antennas, which are gonna give you fantastic transmission distance and awesome audio quality. Now, given that GMRS antennas work on line of sight, you may think that the taller antenna, the better in all conditions, but that's not actually the case. And that's the reason we have short antennas and long antennas to suit different conditions. A shorter GMRS antenna will transmit a more rounded radiation pattern and it has a lower gain. So whilst it won't transmit just quite as far as a longer antenna, in mountainous or hilly terrain, it's actually gonna perform far better than a longer antenna. However, if you're out on flat open country, then a longer antenna is gonna give you the maximum transmission distance, but it does have a flatter radiation pattern. So rather than a ball, it'll be a long elongated radiation pattern which is why our antennas are interchangeable. So you can leave the same base on your car and switch between a long and a short whip, depending on where you're traveling. Now, when we talk about antenna gain, there's a very technical explanation, which I'm not gonna to provide to you today, but it's very easy to remember. A shorter antenna has a lower gain, in our case, 2.1 dBi, and a longer antenna has a higher gain, in this case, 6.6 dBi. And this relates to the amount that the antenna can amplify the signal out of your radio. But remember, bigger isn't always better. Now, one of the other major differences between the different antennas in the GME range is the spring base. You'll notice on our 4704 and 4705 antennas, they've got quite a large spring base. That's a heavy duty base designed to absorb the maximum amount of vibration. So if you're doing a lot of hardcore wheeling or you're driving on particularly rugged terrain, it's worth checking out our heavy duty range. Now, when you look at the heavy duty antenna spring, you'll see that it's physically quite large and robust in its construction. When we look at a medium duty spring, such as you find on the AE4707, you'll notice that the spring is physically smaller and lighter weight than that of the heavy duty range. The antenna is still 2.1 dBi. It will still transmit just as far, but the construction is designed for your general overlanding vehicle. So if you're not pushing your car to the limit in those hardcore wheeling environments, it may be worth checking out one of our antennas from the medium duty range. We also have the medium duty spring paired with a 6.6 .6 dBi whip, 
which is our 4702 model. That'll give you the higher gain, but again, using that lighter duty spring, so it's a little bit smaller and not quite as conspicuous on your vehicle. Now, all of the antennas in the GME GMRS range are supplied pre-terminated with high quality coaxial cable. There's a little over 14 feet. It's pre-terminated with an FME connector, so it's super simple for you to install on your overlanding vehicle. Now, if you are doing a DIY install, it's really important that when you're running the cable, you make sure that you don't kink it or pinch it in any way as it can dramatically affect the performance of your radio. If you want any more information on the range of GME GMRS antennas, head to gmeus.com or drop a comment below if you've got a question that you'd like answered.